there are moments that you feel that something is not right. You cannot tell what it is. You don't have the evidence to point out why you think something isn't right, but sometimes you just sense that something isn't right. Now, there are many reasons why someone may feel as if something isn't right. And it can be that someone's just wrong. That someone is just, is just, well, it can be that they are tired. It can be that they uh, don't understand the situation and that's why they're feeling that way. But listen, there are times that that sense that something ain't right is a indication that indeed something ain't right. Okay, because remember, you are a human being. That means you are a spirit being with a soul and you're inhabiting your body. And as a spirit being, you are an energy being. That means that you have an energy field around you. That's what they call the aura. And your energy field contains what they would call the inner radar. All right. It is compared to spiritual kidneys in the Bible. All right. It, that that's your that's like your alarm system that alarms you when negative energy or some spiritual danger is coming near you not everyone is sensitive to to this alarm system there are people who are some even sometimes even unbelievers are more sensitive to this alarm system than believers but okay I'm going to give an illustration so you can imagine what I'm trying to say here. Okay, let's say we have Bob. I often use male examples, not because I'm sexist, it's just because I'm used to giving male examples. Okay, now look, Bob works full time, has a good salary, his home is decorated with fancy stuff. His, his wife loves him, they have two children, they're very young, because Bob, he used to be uh, an alcoholic and drug addict, he used to smoke crack every day and drink a lot of um, intoxicating spirits, that's with intoxicating spirits I mean heavy drinks, in some places they call um drinks with high with a high percent of sense of alcohol they call them spirits but okay so that was the life the life not literally it's not life but it was the lifestyle remember lifestyle is a kind of life but it's not life itself that's the lifestyle bob had for years they tried counseling it never worked because they never went to the root issue the root issue was rejection by Bob's father. Bob's father was a angry, emotional, numb man that never learned how to deal with his, his emotions. So when he had children, the children suffered because of this. And this affected Bob. Bob was not aware of this. But that was the open door that led to Bob being, uh, becoming addicted. And Bob tried by his own strength to get to get rid of his urge to alcohol and his urge to smoke and crack, but he always failed. And Bob began to believe that he was a hopeless case and he even attempted suicide a few times. But then one day there was this church ministry that came by and they were talking about new life in Jesus and Bob thought, you know what, I don't want this religious stuff, it's all phony, but well, I've attempted suicide almost five times, let me just see what they can mean to me. Bob goes to our deliverance ministry, a pastor comes by, prays upon him, Bob's beginning to shake, he falls to the ground, and the pastor even speaks a prophecy upon his life. That they'll be married soon 
that he will do will work for the for, for for the Lord. After that day, the next the next day, Bob when Bob uh, lit up his uh, his his how how was it again? When Bob began to smoke again, he stopped immediately. It was very dirty. Any time he smoked his crack. Well, he enjoyed it, but this time it was very dirty. It even became sick of it. And alcohol, he didn't even want to taste alcohol anymore. He didn't. He, he all his buddies that were also addicted. You know, he removed their telephone numbers from his telephone. He even bought a new telephone. And within days, he even got a job. And. Within a month, he met his wife, and within three months, he was married. And now he was attending that church, and he was even giving Bible studies. And he's now he's a father of two children. So anyone that looks at this would, would say, whoa, this is a miracle. And indeed, according to the world, it is a miracle. Because if you're addicted to drinking and smoking, those are two addictions combined with violence. That's that's fueled by a lot of emotional tensions. And you also have friendships that empower you to remain that state. And you also have friends and family that condemn you and treat you badly. So you don't have a social network to um, help to that are that's willing to help you. So such an individual, well. Normally, it would take years for such an individual to recover, if they recover at all. But Bob, within one day, he was completely recovered. And within three months, his whole life, I mean, his whole existence was turned around. And some of the old associates of Bob, when they saw Bob after a year, they were frightened. Because they thought, how is this possible? Is that Bob? And Bob never fell back. Bob makes plain he doesn't want to hang out with them because he, he has a family now. He goes to work. And even, even some of those associates joined that church. And they also got help for their drug-related issues. They also got help for the debts they have. So anyone that looks at this would say, that's a work of the Lord. And they would begin to praise the Lord. But someone... That has spiritual discernment. And there are some unbelievers who have this discernment on the spiritual level. They are, all believers should have spiritual discernment, but unfortunately, there are believers that are not delivered. Okay? But someone with spiritual discernment will look at the situation and say, hold on a minute, something isn't right here. So let's say we have a, a woman called, we have two women. Those women uh, visit that church and they are friends, they know each other their whole lives, they are from the same village. And one is called Suzanne, the other is called Mary. I'm making up names just for the, for the, for the example's sake. Mary looks at the situation and begins to praise God, begins to praise the Lord. But Suzanne is sensing that, hold on a minute, hold on. And then Mary begins to ask Suzanne, Suzanne, why aren't you rejoicing? That man used to be a mess. And look at him today. Yes. But then Suzanne begins to ask some questions. Mary, um, this has nothing to do with faith, nor with the Lord. Then Mary, Mary looks at her and thinks, Suzanne, are you influenced by Satan now because you are speaking against the improvement of another human being? Suzanne says, hold on, Marie, Marie. Don't you realize that Satan also can perform miracles? And Marie says, yes. Well, this case, I'm not so certain that it's the Lord that's behind this. And then Mary Ask, okay, so why are you thinking that way? Then Suzanne explains. Anyone, this is what Suzanne is saying. 
anyone that becomes an addict like he was, it doesn't happen overnight. It happens over time. And they don't become like that back on their own. It was traumas in the youth or traumas later in life that con that opened them up to be suspect to, to be vulnerable to addiction. And even then there were people that they met that led them into that lifestyle. And there were all there's also the condemnation of the community that kept them in it. If such an such, such, look, such an individual, the, the society has invested in their doom. Why? Suzanne explains, I've learned sociology and I can tell you, every society wants bad examples. If there are no bad examples, they will create the bad examples out of thin air and force and they, and they will mistreat people and traumatize people so that they can have some people to put that, la that bad label upon. Why? Because society is a fear construct filled with conflict. People want to be validated. And the only way people get validated is at, is at the expense of someone else. So if they are good citizens, if, they're, if they are accepted, it means that there must be people that are rejected. Because if there's nobody that's rejected, then that acceptance, what's the use of it? That's why our society needs to have villains, people to hate. And drug addicts are the easy targets. So this guy, he was a target of society and people invested in his tomb. That's why he remained for years in that situation and he almost died. Even his relatives invested in his own doom. And you think that one day that guy suddenly is delivered and all those other people from his past just accept it. Where in scripture did society ever embrace a miracle done by Christ? Then Mary begins to think, hold on a minute. Indeed. And Suzanne continues. Suzanne is a very wise believer. And Suzanne explains, look, the people around him noticed that a shift happened in him. And because a shift happens, they cannot come with their accusations anymore. But look at this. This guy, Bob, is not a member of this church. He has a job now. So what happened? He has become a, a respect. He has become a reflection of a respectable image they have in society, and that image of is part of the fear construct that we call society. So people can easily categorize him from the loser to a respectable man, and forget and about all the bad stuff they've spoken about him. So now they don't have to feel guilty about, about him. And they can easily deny that it was God doing anything. So the, he was both a victim and a perpetrator. A perpetrator because he remained in addiction and he also harmed other people, but he was also a victim. So the victimizers contributed to him becoming who he was because we are all formed by our environment. But now, the environment that contributed to him becoming that way is not held accountable. So people are left alone in their darkness without the need, without the pressure to repent. Bob used to be a target, an easy target because, well, he was an addict and he also was doing wrong also. So that's why he was an easy target for people to blame. But those people come those people that contributed to Bob's demise, they're still in the negativity. They're now, they just shifted to another target. And Bob is relieved. But he's not delivered. Look, when God delivered, when you are delivered, I'm not talking about the relief, when you are delivered, the environment is going to notice that you are delivered. And your deliverance is going to have consequences for your environment. 
people that contributed to your demise are now bound to give up the way they think about you. They, they are bound and obliged, or let me say that they are forced to think differently about you, to come back and upon the decision they've made and to disagree with reform decisions. They have to change their stance about you. They will have to, they basically have to let go, I guess what they've done pre before, because if they don't, anytime they continue to target you, they have consequences. So deliverance is something that will affect those that kept you in bondage. And this effect is something they don't want to, to face. They don't want to go through this. They don't want to be affected this way. So anytime someone is delivered, there's going to be a backlash against an individual. And that backlash can it can continue throughout the, 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 the lifetime of that, pe that individual that's delivered. Why? Because the people that persecute you, they have children, and that hatred is passed onto the children. So it can also affect the, pe uh, the children of the one that's delivered. That's why Jesus Christ said we need to endure until the end. So if this Bob is delivered, why is he so at peace? Why isn't, why, look, look Mary, of course when you have Christ, you, you are at peace on the inside because you have the peace of Christ. Nevertheless, Christ said in the world you will have tribulation. So if this guy has been miraculously delivered by the, mo by the Father, then why isn't he persecuted? The, the people he used to bother when he was an alcoholic and drug addict, did they just forget about him? He may have stolen money from maybe drug dealers. Aren't they coming, trying to come after him now? Well, what, is, what about his relatives that used to talk bad about him all the time? How come those relatives that condemned him for years, how come they are so comfortable being in his presence? Well, they're the ones that caused all that, that also contributed to all that harm upon him. Then Mary realize, Suzanne, you are, you have more perspective in the faith than I have, and you're telling truth. Look, I've made this um, parable just to explain to you that having perspective is very important. Lack of perspective is lethal. And again, if someone is relieved, it's a good thing if someone is relieved. But it's important to be delivered because deliverance is the, because the deliverance endures. Relief is short lived. Often it's not the people, look, often it's not the people around you that is really the issue. Those people have, do contribute to a bad environment or to bad energy that's true okay you're not going to deny that but often it's not really those people often it's not even um the things you went through or the mistake you've made often it's your lack of perspective that leads you towards destruction didn't christ say to his followers take heed that no man deceive you that implies you need perspective Lack of perspective is very dangerous. In the Old Testament, it's written that where the Lord said, My people perish due to lack of knowledge. But it's all said, Because you've rejected knowledge, that's why I've rejected you from becoming priests before me. And therefore, I need to reject your children also. That implies that lack of perspective will not only affect you. And the relationships you have because the condition you are in will affect the people around you it will also affect your children so for a believer besides deliverance it's important to gain the right perspective because if you have the wrong perspective well you're open to a lot of stuff 
and binding and loosing as two with your way of thinking. I've, I believe I've, I've made a summary about that a while ago. Look, if you have a GPS system in your car, the GPS system can be new, it can be the most expensive one, it can have connections to all the GPS systems in the world. If you type in the wrong address, that GPS system will lead you correctly to that address that you've typed in. But if the data is wrong, that means that the GPS will work and, GP and the GPS is fine. There's nothing wrong with the GPS, but you will end up in the wrong place. But way too often we look at how things work now, how we want swift manifestations. We want quick fixes. We want things to work now. We want things to come together now. We are so focused on wanting things to work that we tend to forget where things are working towards. Well, that's all for now. Be at peace and remain in prayer. <laughs>